Good morning and welcome to Joy News Desk here on Joy News. We are coming to you live from our studios here at Koko Mlemle. We are on digital television, sir, because we are free to air. We're also on DSTV channel 421 and Go TV channel 144. Coming up, there are hundreds of commuters and drivers stranded in Takrade Apawa as the only access road linking nine district in the western region gets flooded. We are live in the town where the western regional minister is uh, uh, scheduled to inspect some uh, places. Also, former toll booth workers broke, desperate and depressed following the cessation of road toll operations. They want President Ekofuado to intervene and reassign them. The plea is that the government should reactivate the toll booths. We hear from the minority who say government has been mean to the workers. Now, uh, meanwhile, environmental experts are warning the flooding situation in a part of the country is a, sig a signal of bigger environmental uh, threat if uh, illegal mining and uh, the taking over of forest vegetation are not checked. We have details plus business and sports coming up. We are your home of independent, fearless and credible journalism. Now, hundreds of commuters and drivers got stranded on the D. Takradi Apoa stretch of the highway as the road was flooded on Tuesday. The road is the only access road link in nine districts in the western region and the western north region. Tuesday's flood halted the movement of vehicles and commuters whilst most vehicles were submerged in the flood. Some commuters had to risk their lives while walking in the flood, others had to wait for hours for security personnel to rescue them. Some stranded commuters and drivers who have been speaking to join you say city authorities should look for a possible solution as early as possible since the specific area floods any time there's a downpour. Oh, if he is inside. Ah, nobody can answer. Oh, because both you and I are to to start with it was flooded at our place, so we couldn't see. My friend, you know, we are maybe. Unless you know, man, I'm so nice as a daughter. I go so near to my. Tia in a park, baby, I'm just a horror. I'm just a genie. Tia, you know, one and soon, what the force will buy. I buy into my new shoe. Sitting at your third room, my meeting is so much. My father brought me my son. My father grass him a cut and a can of soup. Tia, I turn him on. I'm so nice. Tia, you know, I'm a baby. I'm a. If you take right in, we could see him. 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 We could no one the cars are they are almost stuck in the water and which was what is it's not advisable at all so i think the next time you know, if the, the there is rainfall at least they should wait for a while not to come at all in order to create traffic over here and also i'm appealing to the mps and the mcs and dc in the region that they should focus at this area and create at least a paved way for the water in order to stack here and also to the authorities of the, uh, uh, the uh, St. Mary's in order to help have another companion with the uh, road uh, safety so that they will have a paved way here so that because this is 
It's not a good idea. It's yeah. not. Uh, how many, in your estimation, how many cars have been affected? Oh, more than 10. Okay. And it's not advisable. than 10 because with my with my eye with as as uh, as a uh, as when i came and met i i met almost more than seven cars around mm -hmm. but by so doing we have have a pay way for the cars to pass by okay. uh -huh. so my advice is that at least we should focus here because with the western region this is the single lane and it's not good at all if it should be a double lane here and also the gutter is huge mm -hmm. here huh if they can even scrape the area here not to sell or those who are having some uh, marketing here should, they should suck them off from this area because this place is not that we've been joined on the line by the regional minister for western region kwabana otre daku mens uh, let's uh, have a chat with him uh, thank you very much uh, honorable for joining us we're grateful now that area um i'm sure has seen the severest of floods this year in in your briefings from from your officers what is accounting for what we saw yesterday Hello. hi honorable i uh, if you can hear me uh we are yes i do okay so so i'm trying to I find do. out from you what briefings you've had in terms of what caused what we saw yesterday oh basically um We've come to realize that um, we have two culverts that are a mismatch for the flow of the water. So um, that creates a buildup of the flood around the St. Mary's uh, school. So currently, we come here in the morning to demolish the smaller one so that the water can flow as quickly as possible to the other side. Um, of the land. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what we are here this morning trying to do. But uh, we also believe that there are precautions that people could take so that they don't get themselves uh, in danger. Uh, especially those who are traveling when it's raining, we believe that if it's not essential, there's no point um, attempting to do so. Um, secondly, we also believe that the cars that drive on the road, they should keep to their proper lane instead of trying to be um, trying to drive in the outer lane because the outer lane always keeps them to, to the river the problem. Well, uh, Mr. Dakumen, sir, we know that in that area, uh, there used to be a, a natural water reservoir there and then uh, a sky limit built on it without proper drainage to allow the water to flow. How are we tackling that 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 one too? Yes, because um, that's why I said that mm. um, it's kind of an engineering problem, and then um, the engineers have come to look at it. We need a proper storm drain from where you are talking about the sky limited area to the other side uh, near the Amafukuma uh, Road. You know that when you turn also from the Takwadi Main Road right right into uh, sorry left into Amafukuma. The first portion of the land is an open space, more like a mangrove. That can also be a sink to collect water. So currently that's where the water is moving to. But unfortunately, because the culvert that leads to that place of smaller, we are not able to move water as quickly as possible from the sky area. It is new area I'm showing you, which is also a sink behind the, the temporary structures that are by the side of the main road. Mm. So how soon are we going to see an action to ensure that the, the oh, as for, out? as for um demolishing the smaller culvert we are doing it immediately um we are thinking that the major storm drain um, could be added to the main construction of the main road from takradi to Apoan. because if the rains don't get off the road any road you build uh was poor really so it's better that uh, uh, we add it to the project so that uh, we are able to save the road when we rebuild it. And when is the construction going to uh, happen? Uh, we know that uh, the Minister for uh, Roads and Highway announced it, that very soon a contractor will be coming to fight to work on it. So uh, we are expecting it to come out quickly as possible. 
For, for those who got uh, locked up in the flood waters, very soon might not be the answer they are looking for. When exactly do we know? Um, yes, but I also not give a date that I'll be told I'm a liar in the next three days. So it's better to let the construction start. We're also aware, like, like you alluded to, that there's been a lot of um, development in waterlogged areas along that path, path that could have uh, helped in the water flowing off. How are we tackling that? That we, we've sat down and watched on for people, people to build in waterways, and these are recent developments. How are we tackling yes, that? Are those those that are, are been built in waterways, they are going to bring them down. In fact, yesterday I instructed that uh, one building around the fire set area, that area, it broke it down. So they are going to give the notice, and then we are going to demolish uh, that building and the wall. So. It's something that we are working on. Mm. All right. Um, I'm grateful that you joined. But if you could hold the line a little for us, let's try and bring in our correspondent, and then we can come to you for, for some discussions as well. And I feel okay. concern is our original correspondent. He, uh, she joins us on Zoom. Ina, uh, you've been touring some of the affected areas. What's the latest in, in terms of the flooding, main, mainly in front of the St. Mary's Boys School? Well, for this morning when I went there, it it was okay. It had not flooded, but then the, the traffic situation was uh, had also started again this morning because you have some of the vehicles which were submerged in water still at the roadside where people were trying to get them off, and then some mechanics also trying to work on some of the vehicles. And drivers were also finding it a bit difficult to drive to. So that is the situation. The flood, you can see it. And it's still raining anyway in Takarade. But we are only hoping for the best. And so that is the situation this morning. Mm. And since it started raining, are you seeing signs of a possible flood again? Well, Kujo, um, you can't tell. But within some two hours, by the time you know some places have had it, you can talk of a typical example of IAD. For instance, getting closer to uh, the film station, there is this particular house there that you know that yes, it's been years, every time it rains, definitely we see some blood and other parts like Josie and Kotoko and all that. And so we cannot tell for now since it's, it's, we've not seen it, but we just hope for the best. But was there any casualty in yesterday's flood? None. Uh, I have not had any from either the security or um, people or city authorities. None has been complained yet. It's just uh, those that uh, the cars that were submerged and the people had to wait. As at 11 p.m. yesterday, when we were there, people who were still walking from an choice man and I have to make, trying to make their way to other parts of the, the region. As in a hunter with other parts of the regions, yeah. But casualties, I can't recall any which has been set up. All right. Uh, Ina, kindly follow uh, the development so we get to update our viewers with the latest. Thank you very much. That's uh, Ina Thalia Konsa there. Now, uh, let's still stay in the region. In the following report. the opportunity not less than 50 percent of those engaged you know to be to be uh, given to uh, uh, the physically challenged because it's one sure way it's one sure way of of giving them some employment the promise to employ persons with disabilities to collect road tolls subsequently became a reality the MPP government put a smile on the faces of the people who were employed there. Subsequently, the Vice President, Dr. Mahmoud Balmia, made a firm commitment to do more. Persons with disabilities would constitute not less than 50% of the people employed to operate toll booths across the country. However, 
when the finance minister Kenoforiata declared that the toll booth operations had been abolished, the hopes of the workers were crushed. The government has abolished all tolls on public roads and bridges. The toll collection personnel will be reassigned, the expected impact on productivity and reduce environmental pollution will more than offset the revenue foregone. The pledge to reassign all toll booth workers has not come to pass yet. For six months, the workers have not received any salaries yet. So we are doing respect to pa because what free meeting and what free because when we say they are what it will be able to meet here. But they say you man no go any day. We are doing fire and yeshi. At least yeah, the yeah, the them yeah, we say yeah, the them. The them didn't cry. I forget. It's a yeah, be here. Ni yaka kara ko ya noa. Forget. Yeah, forget it. Them na yeah, dino. We are focusing on say be ko yeh nim. But after the way I see about be can we nama yeh disability no. Aye kesi. Problem na aye kesi pa men can da da. Any easy. You know easy yeah. What is falling on me? I be praying for the man them. Don't nobody understand them. You know easy yeah yeah. That is Evelyn Gadri. She used to work at the Pubiman toll booth. When the going got tough, she started hawking in the street to put food on the table for her four children. She waved through vehicles to sell her wares to commuters. But an accident around the Achimota Melcom area has left her in shock. She identifies the girl who was involved in the accident in a video I had taken earlier. Lady Bakon a beggar or not what a whole chain Ukita Mufra Ketua mean be only a twins. Tia Kwan one was a Mitsura was a caveat free. You're a fab of France. So. When we at once, if Nina Munina day, I say, and I wouldn't look coy. Three days that no baggage I will find you in Tino. A man, my man is me, maybe what say. My man is some On our because near any day, I'm a Mikrambone, same as Miss Rosa, Miss Meko. Evelyn joined other Tobu workers to picket at the Ministry of Roads and Highway, but that yielded no results. Yakun several times. The BIA is on the pipeline. The BIA also is on the pipeline. After the other time, you can't say, you can't train one day 11 in two. So, what did you do? You cry a man of time, you can't say, you can't say, it's on the pipeline. And you can't say, you can't say, you can't say, ah. Evelyn is frustrated because her husband's shoemaking shop was also demolished, so he's also out of work. First, many able person and until but me also one shame me on a minute no woman by pen you know one shame fifteen years and will be see by this time. It's your no honor of a family or yemen who had a crabby and he had any year manage a crack crack. But what's a baby boon in dying or woman in the kiosk? Me and I may make quite my banner. Now be a cool year fight. Me maintain if ye. I didn't know a hand to me. Odoi, Evelyn's husband says. He is now miserable because of the current state of the economy. Me bra, me bra, ba ku bi kwa ebo sray na omano hundred down two be one point two. Osi sa di oribe to to fini nyama nyama koto wa traffic. Enu kwa po mi catch rense e dangerous. No si da bi. Kwala no, kwala no si se a school. Omo school fees. So omo be kosku kwa omo bi ane. Genevieve also used to work at the Pubiman toll booth. Due to the high cost of living and the fact that she's currently jobless, she feels suicidal. Because 
my bank account is ready. I'm say last money I'm going to call you now. Call Philip from Sydney. No, it's my mask. Can I can? I want NIB. I want to get the pay for it. I want to save fifty Ghana. She says the news about the abolition of the toll booth took a toll on her. Prior to that news, a car lost control and crashed into the booth she was working in. She was trying to get away when she fell on her hip, breaking hip implants and worsening her condition. A certain Kia Bongo came when I gave the ticket. So when he moved for me to save another uh, car, the ticket, to me. then I heard bang. So I was I don't know what happened. So I was struggling in the boot till I fell down on my leg. And one of my leg is longer than uh, let's say Ghana is longer than Africa. So I I wear I used to wear special sandals. Special sandals. Uh -huh. So it slipped me and I I this one, this my leg went down uh, heavily and the implant inside got break. Authorities at the toe booth did not cover her hospital bill. She appealed for funds to undergo surgery and upon recovery she was hit by the news that toe boots had been shut down. I was not at work that time because I had an accident at the workplace so I was in the house. So when I heard the, the news, you know, it was not easy for me. It was not easy for me to control myself. I was hoping that I would get better and go back to work. And suddenly, the news came out that we are not able to go again. Genevieve says they have been patiently waiting for news about reassignment, but government has been silent. <laughs> Because a me had no echo junction, five cities, oh, bar five cities, I are in ten cities from junction also echo Accra, and say five cities, fifty persons so sign into or qua ni in and out in Accra, and I find say twenty five Ghana. Ne drea ni kro be din kan ho. Inti me ni biya, no tifi. Oye, electrical engineering. Currently, I spend um, 25 CD a day on transportation. Sometimes my friends do do help me and uh, buy food. Or, or sometimes I manage to to buy food. So in, in all, I spend about 5 CD just to buy food so that I can be able to use the rest for transportation. The head of the advocacy committee at the Ghana Federation of Disability Organizations, Alexander Bankoli Williams, wants government to listen to the cries of his members. Unfortunately, the minister did not give us a deadline. Uh, he just indicated that uh, there were uh, some discussions ongoing. As I speak to you, I keep on getting calls from you know our our members who benefited from this. There are people who have undergone surgery. There are people whose kids are now home because of this whole you know uh, turn of events. If the government is not going to get jobs for them immediately, our plea is that the government should reactivate the toll boots. Evelyn and Genevieve are calling on the president to speak up about their concerns. Na na on Kenya nso ye bema. Om se we nyina nso okasa. Om okasa final on kasa. No be kire nse ampa. Ejuma o ho e bema ye because nya minister kan ye ngini di na na ye ngini di. Mr. His excellency, doctor. Asemba ko kai re me de ni se. The disabled are suffering. And in Tina or more mobile, yeah, yeah, yeah. His Excellency, the suffering of the IOKC. The Ministry of Roads and Highways says they will solve the problem. Isaac A.J. Kwache is the Deputy PRO of the Roads Ministry. The Ministry does not have any agreement with the individual contractors. 
or colleges. We cannot deal, deal with them individually, but it is rather the company that employ them. But that notwithstanding, we are engaging with them to ensure that we find a makeable solution to some of these um, squabbles. When will government fulfill this promise? Georgia Kobner, join you, Straka. And joining us for a discussion on this development is Ranking Member, Roads and Transport Committee of Parliament, Kwame Agboja. Chief, thank you very much for agreeing to speak to us. Uh, you obviously are not happy with this development. What have you done in your capacity to understand uh, what government is doing about this situation? Can you unmute so we can hear what you are telling us? Um, uh, good, mo good morning to you and good morning to your cherished viewers. Mm. Um, we have been doing our part. It is the public that need to take uh, the next action. My brother, um, first of all, I want to uh, sympathize uh, sincerely with uh, uh, all two, uh, former toll booth workers, especially those who are, uh, uh, I mean, uh, disabled people who have been uh, employed and currently uh, have to be struggling with their rent, their school fees, their food and, and everything. Uh, this whole issue is uh, based on one uh, significant issue of uh, the usual deception by government. My brother, the, the bottom line is that there was no reason and no need to shut down the toll booth. Mm. Uh, the entire reason for shutting down the toll booth was a public relation exercise because the government decided that we are going to introduce e levy and people are going to react negatively to it. So we will say that, oh, even we have forgiven you one of the of, 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 of the taxes. But it is completely uh, needless. What have we done so far? You saw us vehemently oppose this illegal, we still believe it's an illegal act of uh, unilaterally uh, uh, spending the collection. You notice the minority led uh, by the, the Honorable Haruna Idrisu and then myself and many people spoke that this action was illegal and must be uh, um, reversed. You notice that the Speaker of Parliament did speak and say that this action is illegal and must be reversed. You notice what happened immediately Speaker spoke. Some senior members of the new patriotic party went and used unprintable words against him. And if some of them even suggested that if you like, he can come and play the role uh, at all. The, the negative impact we are seeing uh, 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 beyond even what you what uh, is in your video. Currently, I can tell you that the big we've made a lot of investment to put the toll booth in, in a way that we can collect tolls. Now, all that investment is going to it. People are vandalizing the things and, and everything. And now, the most the, the dangerous part is how we can see our compatriots uh, uh, laid off. And there's nothing happening. The, speed, the, the, the finance minister sat there, stood in parliament and promised that no toll worker will be laid off and they will all be reassigned. I, 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 including last week, I met a representatives of them who come telling me that no, they are not being paid. Some of them are being paid. Some of them are not being paid. And then there's no uh, sign of the, anybody reassigning them. And all of a sudden, the high ranking officials at the ministry are no longer speaking. The minister, the finance minister, it's not speaking about the, the, the toll booth anymore and the reassignment. Dr. Baumia is not talking. Uh, the president is not talking. The minister of road and highways is not talking. None of his deputies are talking. The, the main PRO is not talking. Now, the only person speaking about this is the deputy PRO. Very soon, you won't get anybody to talk about that. Let me give you why you should be very angry this morning. If I tell you that government is even borrowing money to build more toll booths, you, you tell me that is not possible. But we are borrowing money from abroad which we are paying interest to build more toll booths. When, 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 when did this happen? When, when was the last time they borrowed money to, to construct toll booths? Well, uh, recently they, tried, they brought some loan to, uh, uh, to build a bridge uh, across one of the rivers into a, a front place. In that loan, it's about three, or four, or three to five million euros to build new, uh, the new uh, toll plazas. And, and my brother, when the finance minister spoke in parliament and suggested that the part of the reason they are stopping the toll booth is because it creates environmental and other things. My brother, I mean, I don't even know where they get this thing from. But because they believe you and I are so gullible, we swallow everything. Even in the United States, even in Britain, every advanced country, road tolls are a, a, a good way of raising revenue to improve the same roads. All they have done better is that they have automated it. So nobody needs to stand there 
I, I sit in there and then find a way of, of collecting the money uh, physically. So how can you say that you are stopping the collection of Togo because of environmental reasons? They did it simply because they thought Ghanaians would buy it better, would buy the e-levy better, if they say, oh, we, we are introducing e-levy, but we have stopped the Togo. But I know that contractors and the toll workers uh, listening to us right now, who will know that even if it's just 78 million Ghana city we get annually, there's somebody who actually went within the roadside as part of uh, uh, his contract, just uh, cutting grass at the roadside, who is owed uh, 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 1,500 cities. Imagine what 78 million can do. And we in the minority were even ready to support government to say that, look, we probably need to review the road toll collection regime currently. Automate and probably see, I mean, larger vehicles can pay more. Mm. I don't see how Ghanaians will sympathize with anybody driving V8 and being asked to pay two or three or four CD to go across, across the motorway. So, so but, Mr. Agoja, as, as a ranking, what are you doing to get the minister to account to you on what they've done in terms of uh, re assigning these uh, persons with disability because that's the promise they gave well, when they were taking away the toes. Yes, you notice uh, in the past uh, we were, uh, I've been speaking about this and then uh, out of uh, a knee-jerk reaction, he came out saying that we, they will they will convert the toll booth into public toilets. When I uh, made, draw his attention to the fact that I don't think any sensible human being will go to uh, 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 use a loo in the middle of a highway, he said I didn't understand him well. So we have we have been raising this issue, including last week, that you need to reinstate the toll booth because you'll be surprised to know that just a few months after, uh, before the cancellation of the toll booth, we actually contracted some people to invest in IT and other things on some of the toll plus uh, in some of the toll plazas. So the investment that we have made is gone to waste. And today we see vehicles driving into them because in the past vehicles slowed down to go through the toll plazas. Today, because they know there's nobody there. And to make it worse, we have seen this our compatriots laid off, and as uh, they've promised them that they will be uh, given, uh, they, they will be reassigned. The ministry is broke. I will not be. I, will, I mean, did I hear the deputy uh, a PRO saying that they don't have any contract with the individual? Look, he's a very good uh, gentleman. He shouldn't go there at all. The government knows exactly who um, employs the disabled people. Yet they said that they were going to be reassigned. So. This is not the time to be uh, picking and choosing as to whether they are actually okay. employees. So, Abuja, so, so, so finally, once the parliament has started warning ministers for failing to do their work, would you thread on that same uh, uh, you know, road to caution the minister that if he doesn't uh, you know, reassign these people, you are not going to consider his business? Well, even the, the, the leader of uh, parliament is speaker. Uh, speaker had uh, made a point, and then he, the, what they told him was to come and collect the toll himself. I think your suggestion is is, is well placed. I, I think first of all, we must uh, we must demand that government reassign and continue to pay the toll workers as they, they have promised, so that they can pay their rent, they can pay their school. Look at the the, the, the lady, four children, and the other the, the husband is also disabled. Unfortunately, under uh, so, uh, some unfortunate situation, he, the, the husband's uh, 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 shop has also been demolished. Imagine if this was your relative. How will okay. you be feeling this morning? But Babuja. just like anything, e-levy, a cathedral, everything, the government will do exactly what they think because they think you've uh, 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 elected them and nobody can do them anything. That is where we are here. Okay. Other countries, this thing should have led to um, a major action against government and reverse this. But in this Thank country, nothing will happen. I'm grateful to you, Mr. Agbaja, for joining us. Kwame Agbaja is ranking member of the Roads and Transport Committee of Parliament. Now still staying in the road sector, resident of communities along Sankor to keep three point in their hand towards municipality of the Western region are calling on government to fix their deplorable road to help save lives. According to them, their communities are sometimes cut off from the capital, Agunan Kanta, because no car can use the road. I visited the community over the weekend and uh, this is what I found. This is a section of the Sankro Junction Cape Three Point Road in the Hunter West Municipality of the Western Region. It connects Ghana's all rich community, the Cape Three Point, to the rest of the country. The deplorable state of the road has worsened in recent times. During the 2016 and 2020 elections, all political parties used the people's desire to have the road fixed to push their campaigns. But since 2017, the promise is yet to be fulfilled. 
Fatih is a new mother. She tells me she nearly lost her life on this road whilst in labor. I went into labor around 10 p.m. I was transported in a tricycle. I almost lost my life and the baby. And I bled profusely. Governments must come to our aid because we vote as well. We are part of the country and need our roads fixed. Just recently, a young man working on a stretch lost his life. His friends believe his would have been saved if they had rushed him to the Nana Himadechi Hospital in Deskov early enough. They blame the bad nature of the road. Anthony is a friend. A worker. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bridge. And then a new Sabrina. You to hear. Your man is about to answer quining in. We were working on the bridge when he collapsed. Due to the nature of the road, we couldn't get him to the hospital early enough. So we lost him. Why am I yet many anipan? But quining in. I'm why I'm a nipana free. Tears rabbi and say, I'm sure I have one. Now on yet quining for mom. According to him, Drivers don't ply the road after 6 p.m., making living in these areas very difficult for residents, especially visitors. The drivers are suffering. When they come, they don't get the people. So by 6, none of them ply this road. People walk to get here. Drive Ofori has driven on this road for years. He recounts how a young lady lost her life on the stretch. A number four days, and I don't know. Ana ye be duri ase me 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 ba no ka ba ku dine ni be be jine ya ha ya enti cha na ka no no okolo di nua no duri hase no ana onu timi enti me su me ntumi nko enti me me parki wo na chiwa 4 days ago it happened just here because of the gridlock due to the road the driver carrying the patient couldn't get to the hospital early we lost her Nanabe Diakon the third is the chief of a Lobankata and the Jasini of the lower disco of traditional area. He expressed disgust about how the road has been left unattended to for these years. It no cross him ni yeah swing the direct road to keep three point a wall to them oily. Ew and a gana me and be when you are good uh answers of road uh one crown when you resources be a my and my good resources uh yeah to this leads to the oil rich keep three point but look at our road we have all the resources but we are the ones with the bad roads our road is a tourist road but look at it we are exploring oil from keep three point yet the road is not being constructed we don't even understand Communities along this road want government to fix the road for them. Anthony and Fati want government to intervene to get the road constructed. Not 
I want to say, why young class of no, I want your BBA. I got a young class of young Kahubi. Where you wouldn't my hand? I want for your young county, I am so you can't be what to Abano. Yeah, to Abano, yeah, to Abano, so I'm one. But what's not so one? I want share hand. People are dying, children are becoming orphans, and families are wailing because of this road. The earlier an intervention comes, the better. Well, we'll take a quick break. When we return, we'll bring you the latest in business. Stay with us. Good morning. Welcome to business. My name is Daryl Kwao. Women in Mining, WIM Ghana, is spearheading the force to encourage more females to consider mining as a career to bridge the gender disparity in the extractive sector. Asanko Mining Chapter of WIM is exploring new ways to encourage more women, especially students, in the basic and second cycle institutions to take up science, technology, engineering, and mathematics STEM as core subjects to enable them to work along the value chain of the mining sector. And I, Aljima, has more in this report. The United Nations Sustainable Development Goal 5 seeks to achieve gender equality and empowerment of all women and girls. Current global statistics, however, indicate only 8 to 17 percent of women are working in and along the value chain of the mining industry. On this premise, Asanko Women in Mining says it has targeted to increase women representation in the mine from 17 to 25 percent in the next three years. Newly elected president of the group, Gloria Mensa Bentel, during an induction ceremony, explained her office will help drive interest of females in mining. So as a new president, my vision is to support the organization to increase from 17% to 25% of women representation in Asanko mine. Research have proven that there is a gap at the basic level which translates into the outcome of the girls. So we are also going to focus on mentoring the children, the girls from the basic level through to senior high, so that by the time they will get to the tertiary education, they are aware, they are much aware and much informed about the courses to choose that will end them up in working in the mining industry. President of Women in Mining Ghana, Georgette Bans Sechiado, explained the group has the main purpose of advocating full participation of women in the mining sector. I have been in communities and done a lot of these outreaches and the number one thing that young girls, when I ask them, when you grow up, what would you like to be? Guess what they want to be? Nursing. Nursing. Teachers. I don't even get doctors. <coughs> Nursing and teachers. Nurses, teachers. Why? Visibility. In those communities, when they wake up in the morning on their way to school, they see nurses, they go to school, they see female teachers. So, you know, we have to sensitize more women about the opportunities in the industry. Also, sensitize young women about um, the courses and the skills that are needed in the industry so that they can plan towards it. Now, several tracts of land destroyed by illegal miners are expected to be reclaimed as part of efforts to mitigate the devastating effect of illegal mining in Itua range. Already more than 12 acres of the degraded land um, have been revegetated around the river Densu at Sejimase, a suburb of Kibi in the Abuaka North Municipality of the uh, Eastern Region. Kofisian reports that Peno Ricard, a world producer of alcoholic beverages and Arocha, a campaigner for forest conservation, have planted more than 400 trees to commence the project. Here's more. Uncovered mine pits at unregulated sites have not only caused damage to the environment, but also resulted in a number of accidents and deaths in mining areas. In the eastern region, for instance, the destructive environment with several deep pits has become a source of worry for residents and government. It is for this reason that Pinot Ricard has set aside a day dubbed Responsible Day to embark on this initiative. The day is dedicated to ensuring sustainability and responsibility from its employees. This year's commemoration is under the theme helping to protect and restore nature and biodiversity. The sustainability and responsibility manager, 
Eunice Osei Tutu says, the reclamation and tree planting exercise at the legal mining site aligned with their roadmap. Who has been supporting us to do the leveling of the land, etc., would complete um, the, the rest for us. Yes. So um, our 2030 sustainability roadmap has four pillars. The first one is nurturing terroir which is all the actions that we do around nature and environment because all our products are given to us from nature. All the ingredients we use are given to us from nature. It's either one grain or a fruit or water. Four varieties of trees, including emery, mahogany, and a farm were planted. The Deputy National Director of Arusha Ghana, Daryl Bosu, says... With the support of the chiefs, they will ensure that the lands were not destroyed again. We are going to ensure, we are going to make sure that the site stays uh, maintained and protected in the long term so the trees can grow back and we can see the river flowing as it should again. But at the moment, the site you are seeing, we have about 9.5 acres and um, we are planting um, Ofram, Emre and also Mahogany. There's also Amazonia, but these are all native trees. The idea is that we want to encourage the native trees on the site and also to support biodiversity. And also it also helps the soil to uh, regenerate and replenish itself. And that's it for this segment. Uh, the sports news coming up after the break. Stay tuned. And before we bring you sport, a professor of environmental sustainability science at the University of Cape Coast, Professor Frederick Atuama is warning the environment would deal ruthlessly with Ghanaians if human activities that destroy it are overlooked. According to him, the flooding incident in Cape Coast, Accra, and other parts of the country is just a tip of the reaction of the environment, environment to illegal artisanal mining and the taking over of forest vegetation cover for people's selfish gains. Speaking at his inaugural lecture, Professor Ama indicated what the environment intends to do to mankind um, has not even started, and it is only proper um, that we deal with the environment in the proper way. Richard Kojonyakon has the rest of the story. The past couple of days has seen floodwaters inundate the people of Cape Coast. Chufu Heman, the commanded Negra Fabri municipality, the death of one person, broken bridges, roads caving in, houses raised to ground zero, incalculable number of displaced residents, as well as inestimable number of properties destroyed due to the devastation caused by the floods. In Accra and some parts of the western region, the flood waters have rigged enormous havoc with houses and vehicles submerged. Speaking at his inaugural lecture at UCC, Professor Atuama described the relationship with the environment that has broken down as worrying and one urgent steps taken to deal with the situation. It is not surprising that vegetation cover has given way to ground cover moving away, canopy cover is taken away, ground cover is taken away, you have the bare soil which is exposed and for which reason you find the weather elements acting on them and then destroying water bodies is leading to siltation and then of course because it is silted the water holding capacity is compromised and for which reason you realize that even the small amount of rainfall that we have, episodic rainfall, is causing floods. If we continue to treat the environment any way we like, because the environment is not selective. If, for instance, somebody with the financial way that has built even in uh, a waterway, when the impacts emanate, it is not going to select anybody for attention. Everybody would have to suffer, and we know that. In Cape Coast, in Accra, we see a lot of floods, and these are something that we need to also consider. So our human well-being is something which is predicated on the state of the environment. The state of mankind is predicated on the state of the environment. And this is where the kinship is. And I'm saying that in the last few years, we have broken this kinship because we are no longer living harmoniously with the environment the way we ought to and the environment is teaching us little, little lessons. In fact, the lessons that is about to teach us has not started. This is, this is the precursor, the prelude to what the environment can do if we continue to treat it in this particular manner. 
Well, time for us to bring you sports and the man, Lawrence, is in the house. Yesterday, there was a game between Satraman and uh, Tamale City. City. Well, we all know how it went. Yeah. Good news for the people of Bono, good news for the people of Inshatre. Because they will get a representative in the Ghana Premier League next season. It was such a commanding atmosphere at the Accra Sports Stadium yesterday. Mm. You know, it, it's been a long time we saw such clubs grace the Accra Sports Stadium, even though that place is not their home grounds. They grace the occasion, had so much support for uh, their teams. And then at the end of the day, there could only be one winner. So Inzatria Man had the upper, high, uh, upper, upper hand, hand. over. Mm. City. Mm. But then, you know, um, one thing that looked to, at some point to have uh, endangered the beauty of the game was at some point the fans were trying to cause commotion. They but then the, the security were there to, to um, give, uh, mm. provide adequate security and then get everyone back on track. Mm. 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 Inshallah, Treman started the game quite well, started on the front foot, opened the scoring in the second half, but then Tower City came back in with so much uh, tension, so much agency, and then they look to be wrapping up uh, victory until uh, I think they missed... How? It, it was 1-1 one, one in the it first It was 1-1 one, one there, uh -huh. yes. And they had an opportunity to close the game. Okay. But then they missed the chance. It was a close effort for them to steal the win, but then uh, they couldn't take the opportunity, headed into extra time. And then it was from the extra time, from the start of the extra time, you could see Inja Treman had everything. They had the agency. They, they were playing with purpose. So at that time, it was everybody's game. When it was 1-1, it was yes, everybody it was. could win it. It was. But then you could see one team was playing with purpose. Mm. And then, um, Tamale City had the chances, but we were not able to take it. So after a man had it, they were willing to take it. And they took it at, uh, in the first half of extra time. Oh, okay. To, to secure a uh, promotion to Ghana Premier League. Mm. So they joined Kotoku Royals and then Summer Techs to okay. make this season. All right. So that's it. And so after a man FC, congrats to them. And the whole, uh, it's a bono, eh? Yeah, bono. Okay. Yes, right, okay. That's how we wrap up today's edition of the Joy News Desk here. There is more on myjoyonline.com. My name is Samuel Kojo. Brace, do have a pleasant morning. Insuatreman Football Club achieved a history.